In this book, you arrive in a fundamentalist theocracy where young fertile women are re-educated to be subservient breeding machines for the leaders of the faithful, the infertile elite families in a future American dystopian society. The author of this 1985 bestseller, Canadian feminist poet, literary critic, and environmental activist Margaret Atwood, claims that she hasn't put anything in the book which doesn't have a precedent in human history. This is the backdrop for The Handmaid's Tale. Margaret Atwood is a strong advocate of women's rights, and what could promote these rights better than writing a story about a world where these rights are missing? In the future, The Sons of Jacob has occupied almost all of the United States. The Republic of Gilead has rejected the Constitution and Congress, and instead founded a republic based on 17th century Puritan ideology. Fundamental human rights seem like a distant dream for the young women who have no control over their time and their decisions, even their own bodies. Margaret Atwood was living in West Berlin, five years before the fall of the Berlin Wall, when she started writing The Handmaid's Tale in the spring of 1984. She was experiencing the 1980s political right turn in the United States with the election of Ronald Reagan as president in 1981. Reagan was backed by well-organized religious conservatives who criticized the moral degradation from the sexual revolution in the previous decades. In the United Kingdom, Margaret Thatcher, another conservative, had already been elected prime minister in 1979. It was also a time of worry about pollution and declining birth rates in the Western world, of which the latter was partly due to women's access to birth control. She visited several countries in Eastern Europe and got a glimpse of what it meant to live in a totalitarian society. One of the examples of totalitarianism, which Atwood noted in particular, was communist Romania under Nicolae Ceausescu's presidency. Ceausescu had based his economic ideas on the tenets of Stalinism, produce as many workers as possible to create as much production and wealth available to the state. He wanted to increase the population, and so he implemented Decree 770, which made abortions and sterilizations of women below the age of 40 illegal. Contraceptives were made illegal as well. Women were monitored monthly by a gynecologist and tested for pregnancy. A pregnancy was monitored until the day of birth. Atwood, who had read science fiction, utopias and dystopias in the previous decades before starting her controversial novel, was hesitant about writing the novel for a couple of years. I thought I would get into trouble, Atwood has said in an interview with PBS NewsHour. It answered the question, if the United States were to become a totalitarianism, what kind of totalitarianism would it become? When Atwood began her book, it was titled Offred, but she later decided to title her book The Handmaid's Tale, partly in honour of Geoffrey Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales, and partly because of the reference it gave to folk tales, stories told by those who have survived devastating events in life and history. Having been born as a war child in 1939, Atwood had always had an interest in totalitarianism and the effect it has on people. The historical elements play a vital part in Atwood's books. She sets the premise for the books that she cannot put anything in the story which has no precedent in human history. And it is the precedent of events in human history which makes her worry about the times women are living in today. She sees women's rights under threat once again. You can't ignore the fact that there are a number of regimes that have come into power that have these kinds of ideas in mind. The thing they have in common is they all want to roll back women's rights. Atwood does not hide that her book is a feminist warning with women at the front and centre. The story illuminates the threat of women losing control of their most precious ability, the ability to have children. Atwood simply warns women who read her book, don't go there. Margaret Atwood has written and published 60 books, but The Handmaid's Tale surpasses them all, with more than 8 million copies sold in its English version alone. Atwood's book has been exposed to criticism and called paranoid regarding its unfair, indirect condemnation of America's religious conservatives. But The Handmaid's Tale became a success nonetheless when it was published in 1985. The story has been released as a film in 1990, performed as an opera, a ballet, and issued as a graphic novel. It aired in 2017 as a mainstream television series, which has now become a very popular complement to the Me Too movement, and many women see it as a powerful statement in light of current right-wing political, legal and social events. Through the latest series on television, the story has struck a chord and reached a mainstream audience, 
which would otherwise never have received Atwood's message by reading her book. A powerful visual attribute added to the story by Atwood were the red robes and white bonnets for the characters in the book. They were based on costumes from the Victorian age and an old ad from the 1940s for Old Dutch Cleanser, which showed a woman in a voluminous blue dress and a big white hat which scared Atwood when she was a child. For the author, it was all about the concealment and limitation of the female body. Wearing the bonnets made sure that other people can't see the woman, and the woman can't see other people. Today, women are marching in red robes and wearing white bonnets while demonstrating for abortion rights in front of the United States Congress on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. Today, it is safe to say that The Handmaid's Tale has not landed on deaf ears, as the attention around her work reveals itself outside the literary world in political discourse and feminist protests. PBS NewsHour has described the story as a cultural touchstone for readers and viewers. Despite that some critics think this book is an unrealistic portrayal of religious right-wing oppression, The Handmaid's Tale can already be considered a classic, with its depiction of the potential threat a totalitarian society may pose to individual freedom and its effect on women's rights when it comes to sexuality and reproduction in particular.